All right, welcome to Divinity Original Sin 2. Uh, 2? 2, yeah, this is the second one. Uh, me and Ken want to both thank uh, Wave Master Bunt, uh, who is a guy who just uh, uh, gave us kind of copies of the game because we were both uh, kind of not in situations to necessarily get ourselves. The devs were supposed to give me a copy, but they kind of, I guess, forgot about me, so whatever. You know, your indie dev, uh, you know, community, whatever, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, but but thanks, thanks for him for... Uh, uh, getting us this because we were really excited about this. Uh, we really wanted to do it. We were big fans of uh, Divinity Original Sin One, which we have a playthrough on my channel. Uh, it was actually, I think, it was a, one of my favorite games that we did that year. Uh, but it was like fucking long as shit. It's like a hundred parts or something. And I, I have no reason not to expect the same here. But we just we love it. We like doing it. It's a great game. It is. And I, I really, I really want to thank we Master Bunt again. Like. Just, you should all thank him as well because, man, it helped me out a lot to get this uh, kind of like a just a pro bono. Oh yeah, it made it no question. Anyways, let's. Uh, I, I don't think he wanted too much uh, thanks. Anyways, but like, uh, let's let's get into the game now. So, uh, so we're playing on uh, tactician difficulty, which is the second from the hardest. Uh, the hardest one is basically like a you can't load saves. It's like a kind of like a hardcore run. You die, you're dead. Which we don't want to do, this is our first run, this is a blind run. We have played for like about an hour and a half just to kind of understand the new mechanics. I, I don't quite understand all of the new mechanics, uh, but we'll just, we'll kind of get into it. Like, we, we get most of the changes, like about like 90% of it we understand. I think there's something new with the sneaking and the uh, combat stuff, uh, but yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that is when we get in. But anyways, um, so in this game they have actually a couple changes now. They actually have... Um, you get to select uh, custom characters uh, if you'd like, but the best ones are to do are actually um, origin stories. So we have uh, Sibel, and she's uh, apparently an assassin. Uh, and we'll, we'll listen to all their origin stories in a second. I'm just showing out the characters. Uh, we got uh, a Red Yoshi here, which is uh, going to be the guy I'm probably going to play. Uh, we got Louise, which is a uh, performer. Uh, Ifan, this is the one, one of the ones that Kand is going to take, I think. I don't, I'm not sure if, he, if he's starting with this one. Are you starting with I it? am. Yeah, okay. So you're starting with this guy. Well, we'll go into more what we're doing later. You can play as a spooky skeleton. Uh, so you can make this. Uh, there you go. Naked skeletons. <laughs> fucking best shit ever, I swear. Uh, I can't have just a hat and a fucking skeleton thing. Anyways. And then you have Beast, which is a, a, a dwarf. And then every, everyone else is... Uh, you can have apparently like undead lizard, undead human, undead elf. They, they've, they went into a whole lot of things for this. And it's kind of neat because every single race actually has like... I'm not sure how the outfits really work, but they, they changed their outfits. And then there's one that's, uh, where, where's Wayfair for this one? There you go. Advertiser friendly right here. Apparently, uh, Junie got a new role in this game. Look at that. Fucking long neck. Anyways, um, so I'm gonna basically listen to all their origin stories so you guys can basically, uh, kind of get an idea of, uh, all the characters in the game, what they're about. Because, uh, it's kind of important because... They also count as your followers if you choose. They're they're just in the game all the time. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and listen to that for a little bit. See you can't. I used to be a slave, kept under the thumb of the master, the bastard that made me hunt down my own kin. How did he do that? You ask. With the living scar you see on my cheek, this horror that takes no more than a song sung by Master Dearest to control my very thoughts. But now the tables have turned. I broke my shackles. And when I finally find him, I will make the Master sing a very different kind of song. Famed, of course, for my unique red skin and unparalleled skills as a general of the House of War, I, the Red Prince, was raised within the vast palaces of the fabled Forbidden City. I was destined to become the next Emperor. But my ambitions suffered a bit of a setback when I fell from grace for cavorting with demons. Now, 
I'm exiled and hunted by assassins. But I assure you, I remain undaunted and as determined as ever to claim my rightful throne. My life I've been a performer, a musician, beloved and celebrated by all. But I have a secret. I'm also a playground for sprites and spirits and worse. The voice that rings inside me now is darker than any that came before. Almost caused a bunch of my fans to rip each other to pieces. <laughs> but you can trust me. I've got this under control. Step one, find out who or what is trying to take control of my mind. Step two, make it sorry it ever tried. Once I was a crusader for the Divine Order. I pledged my life to Lucian the Divine. The war changed everything. He sent me to save the elves I grew up amongst. I arrived too late. Lucian ordered the use of Death Fog against the Black Ring, annihilating everyone I once knew in the process. Now I'm a mercenary killer, one of the infamous Lone Wolves. And my next target? is none other than Lucian's own son. Oh, don't stare. How would you look after eons in some ghastly crypt? Your people are rather prone to death. Mine are not. Yet when I emerged from my completely unjustified imprisonment, I found them gone. Our culture forgotten. Any trace of the world I knew all but obliterated. I must even hide my true face beneath an ever-shifting mask for fear you savages will attack me. That is how I wander this strange world trying to uncover the truth about a history you primitive people never even knew existed. Hmm. I was just thinking about someone I used to know. My cousin. The Queen, in fact. A tyrant. I tried to stop her, but things don't always go according to plan. She cast me out to a forgotten island and made short work of my allies, too. Lucky for me, I was able to commandeer a ship and began a new life for myself out on the high seas. Aye, but I hear that the Queen is at it again, and there's something darker behind our madcap schemes this time. If I don't stop her, I don't know who will. Alright, I'm done with that. Uh, fine, we got a bit of the background story of all the characters. Um, I guess I'll just go into like what kind of run you expect from me and Ken now. Um, I know there's a competitive element potentially to the campaign here where you can just be like a dick to your ally and like I don't know. Declare war. Declare war and like, like, purposely lock them out of like quests and stuff, and like, and kill everybody you see and things like that. It's a very open-ended game. We played Divinity: Original Sin One. We kind of know how it is, and it's even better now, apparently. So that's kind of interesting. But me, me and Ken are probably not going to try ruining the game in any way. We want to get as I said, it's, this is more of like a, a story run. We're cooperatively trying to get to the end, and and all that kind of shit. So. Uh, that's that's generally what we're going for here to give you guys the full story. So basically, we're listening to all the dialogue. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll read out occasionally some stuff that like mostly my own dialogue. 
I won't really read out like all the notes. I'll probably just skim through them. If they look interesting, I'll, I'll summarize them or something. That's usually how I do these kinds of runs. Uh, as for characters, um, so Kent had the Ranger in the last game. I really want to have a Ranger this time, uh, but that's going to be the second character I have. I'm going to make uh, uh, this the Sibyl into uh, a Ranger because she's got some neat things like uh, Corpse Eater, which I, I figured is actually a good lore thing, so we could get we get to know. Uh, I, I, I bet I, I guess there's some people like getting some memories of the dead. That's kind of like an interesting lore thing for our first run. I figured uh, this feels like the kind of game where you may want to play it a few like a couple times actually. So that's kind of neat because uh, Divinity Original Sin One. I, I didn't feel like I really need to play it past one time, but this one is like interesting. So uh, flesh uh, sacrifice. You gain one action point immediately at the, uh, and a ten percent damage boost. For two turns at the cost of negative one constitution, so it's like uh, you lose a bit of health, but you gain another a uh, damage boost and action point. And break shackles, you get to remove a bunch of negative statuses from yourself. And then you also get lore master. So she would essentially be our lore master kind of ranger. And I was planning on kind of making it into like a high damage crit single target ranger. I was I was hoping, but we'll see how that works out. Because I, I don't know exactly how to. That's that's what I want to lean for for her. As for main character, um, that was the hard one because uh, Kand is doing uh, a sword and board dwarf and he wanted to be a, also the summoner, which is a new uh, kind of class archetype in as of this game. So actually, I can show you guys that. Where is that? By the way, th this is like the hardest part of Kondra. the game. At uh, Kondra, yeah. Yeah, like we've legitimately <laughs> spent like a good few days now like going over this. Yeah, I mean, it, it's because we, we, we have enough to do right now, so we just were able to start it now. So we've got Elemental Totem, Dimensional Bolt, and uh, Conjure Incarnate. So that's what that's what he's going for. And then Sword and Board, I think he's going for, what are you doing, Cleric or...? Uh, probably Fighter. Fighter. Fighter for uh, the, um... Because the Fighter starts with the Geomancy and the Warfare. Which I think is, like, that's pretty fair, because that, that, I want to go for this idea, like, build up the armor. Yeah. And use all the skills that rely on you having really high armor to do a lot of damage. That sounds really good to me. And this one's Ranger, so you guys get an idea of what that is. Okay, so that's that's what I'm doing for like my secondary character. That's both of Kan's characters. For my main one, that, this is the problem I was mostly having. And I, I decided on Inquisitor, which is very similar to what I was doing actually in Divinity Original Sin 1. Uh, and I that's used, exactly what you are doing, wasn't it? Uh, pretty much. I did like dual wielding wands, and then at the end of the game, I... I found that wands were kind of crap, and then I basically decided to... I kind of transitioned myself into, like, a spell, a full spellcaster. Um, so, I figured that's what I'll kind of do again. We'll see We'll see if they've improved it. I'm going to do... Uh, maybe, like, wand and shield. It depends, because I couldn't use shields in Divinity 1, because it required a high amount of strength, and I'm like, I don't want to put fucking shit into strength. I want to, like, maximize damage with intelligence. So, uh, we're going to we're gonna try to do... Uh, something weird here. So I'm gonna start with the Inquisitor class, but I'm gonna change it around a lot. And we're, oh, we're also playing as this guy. I, I like this guy's backstory. I like the whole nobility thing and just being a fucking dick. <laughs> Alright, so it starts you off with Necromancer and Warfare. We're not going into Warfare. I might either do Arrow Thurge or... Yeah, I'll probably just do Arrow Thurge, because that's like Lightning. And no Telekinesis. We're gonna max out Persuasion, actually, because that's, that's what I'm gonna do. I just want to be extra persuasive early on because we're going to be a we're going to be a very good kind of talker, I guess. Um, so you get a couple of abilities with this guy. So you start with um, so I, originally I was thinking of doing like a two-handed build and then and then selecting a bunch of abilities uh, that basically don't scale upon intelligence and maybe just max against strength. I there's the possibility for me to maybe do that, but I was hoping that maybe I would still do int to maybe just have like wand and shield. Or maybe have like a, a staff or something. I'll, I'll see how the staffs are in this game because we, we, we don't know yet. So we'll see. Uh, I think we'll do electric discharge as one of our abilities. Yeah, this is all this is all pretty good. So the, the whole idea with, with the whole playstyle I'm going to go for, it's going to be very kind of open-ended. I basically know I wanted to do Necromancer. And I wanted to do maybe a little bit of magic there uh, on the side. And maybe I'll go, depending upon how the game is going, I'll either go more into magic or more into like dual wielding wands or something I'll, I'll try it all out and i'll i'll see i'm leaving it open so that i can uh switch it out however i want so uh three abilities i'm starting with is electrical jilt uh deals damage to uh characters and sets shocked uh receives bonus from intelligence so we are going to scale based upon intelligence at least for this variant of the character 
Uh, I can heal someone with Bloodsucker with, with, when there's blood around them. And then Mosquito Swarm is also restores vitality. So this is going to be basically like my frontline spellcaster that will maybe absorb a bit of damage. Uh, but we'll see. And I'm kind of giving up... Uh, I don't think any of, the, any of this stuff is uh, particularly great. The really useless one seems like favorable wind. An aura that increases allies' movement speed while they're close to you. It's like kind of meh. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. like um, Oh, so... I'm going to spec out of strength because I don't want to spread myself too thin. I want to go mostly into intelligence and constitution. And So in this game they have uh, finesse, which is like bows and daggers and stuff. Strength is obviously maces and stuff. Constitution is health. Intelligence is like spellcasting and wands. Memory is a new one. So in this game, I forgot how the spell slots worked in the last game. I think it was like... I think it was based upon how trained you were with the skill. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. And th this one now, there's an actual separate stat for that. So we start with three, and then each point gives me another point into memory. So uh, we'll, we'll see how much that, that plays in. I think it does play in, because it basically means, like, I think if you want to do, like, a, if I, if I want to do a lot of intelligence, it means I have to keep a very small set of skills around with me. Um, and then they have wits, which is critical chance and initiative. So that's that's also pretty good. So, but uh, that's not good for this class for that I'm doing because I want to be a, uh, I don't need crits and I don't need uh, anything like that. At least the way I'm building it. Um, I think that's ba oh yeah. So we were going to talk about some of the things that are different here that we realized. Um, so yeah, they added a new summoning uh, class, which is uh, that's what Ken's doing, and then they added polymorph. Me and Ken weren't crazy about that. It looks sort of neat, but it's like eh. I think Polymorph is good if you want to try and make, like, a Thorns tank. I, I mean... Like, Polymorph has a chance to be good, I think. I mean, it would be maybe good, like, Polymorph Necromancer or something, and then doing, like, melee. Yeah, it actually is really good, because, uh, like, then you can get, like, the, uh, damage resorbed, and it's, it's really good. Oh, uh, sure. Fuck, Fred. Fuck, you know, you know, I know it's a bit late to be changing them, maybe I should do that. <laughs> I mean, to what you have it, guys? That's how, like, that's, the character creation is hard, alright? Yeah, I know. Okay. I guess what you want to you want to think about that for you, a little bit. No, no, I don't. I'm just gonna actually do that. Fuck it. Let's just let's go all in. Okay, right. Well, I was gonna say like I'm doing pure summoning. It's like right now I've got two ranks of summoning. I'm gonna like focus on getting good summons. Like as a counter is like you can make totems with like little turrets that you make. Uh, you can summon like and and it like, some like a like, kind of like an empty beast thing. And the totem and the beast change depending on the terrain you summon it on. So if I summon it in water, it becomes a water totem and a water beast. Or fire, you know, vice versa. Yeah, the idea. And that's like I'm going to build it for talents. I'm going with the. Uh, I should have read everything now because I actually clicked the wrong thing. I'm going with the ambidextrous trait, ambidextrous talent, talent rather, so that I can throw like grenades and stuff uh, like offhand for like one action point less. So if I need a surface, I can make a surface. How many how many skill points do you start with in total, by the way? Uh, three. Why? Why do I have four? Polymorph. Polymorph. Oh, polymorph gives you an extra point. Yeah. Oh, that's sick, actually. Why? Polymorph gives you an extra ability point. Why? Or rather, an extra stat point. <laughs> why? It's the bonus. Look at it. it says polymorph provides one I, free I, attribute I, point. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking why though. It's weird. Because it's the whole thing is based around like evolving yourself, and like I think like the max level of skill for that is like, like obtaining godhood. Okay. Well, okay. So we're doing we're doing this. This is a weird build, but yeah, fuck it. Uh, okay. So we're gonna say setting atrophy on them. I don't know what that does, but we're gonna we're gonna go with. Um... Wait, you actually doing like a poly necro build now? Yeah, yeah, I am. Because <laughs> I'm like I'm like that looks fucking great. So we're gonna do that. Okay then. Yeah, this is gonna be retarded as shit, but yeah. Okay. Uh, dude, okay, by the way, this is, like, completely, like, out of the blue. I just, like... This is completely off the cuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, like, I now just decided I was gonna go, like, have a heavy weapon and just go fucking, like, run at shit and kill them. So, this is gonna be fucking stupid, but oh well. Just derailed your own game. Good job, idiot. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay, so for taunts, there's a lot of great taunts. So, I already start with one persuasion and some fire resistance and poison uh, resistance. That's some um, traits about my class. But let's be real, though. You're, your choice... You don't have a choice here. 
I, I mean, I know, I know. But I'm going to say that uh, Kanda's going for ambidextrous. Uh, because he's gonna have scrolls and grenades, and then he's gonna be a like a summoner in the back, so he'll have like some utility spells to use. So I'm Mr. President, all right? Yeah, essentially. So uh, obviously we're going for pet pal because we want to talk to all the animals. So that's 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 how we're gonna go. And then after that, I don't know what we're gonna do. It's gonna be pretty interesting. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I just I looked at that. I'm like, yeah, you know, that seems that seems actually pretty good. So fuck it. You know what? Whatever. All right, because um, uh, I'm wondering what the how it scales, um, how the polymorph abilities scale. Uh, it's it's based on strength. Okay, that's actually really good. That's what I want. Oh, you looking good now? Yeah. So, what what do you think I should get? Uh, tar turn target character into chicken, or should I get a tentacle lash, doing eight to nine physical damage and saying atrophy on them? Hmm. Chicken is probably pretty good. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, actually. I'm having, sounds meme too. I have the thing at where I stand in blooded. I, 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 uh, I can, uh, sorry, I can t get health back when I'm standing in blood. Alright, this is gonna be fucking retarded, this build, but you know what? Whatever. Alright, uh, so we have, uh, our origins are basically we're Noble Scholar, we can't change this at all. Uh, it's just stuck like this, and then we're Lizard and Male, Red Prince and all that kind of stuff, so. This is just, like, how the game basically perceives us. Uh, as this character, and now, now, now for the important part. Well, so, what instrument did you choose, Kant? I chose the cello. Cello. Uh. Cello. 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 Uh. <laughs> so, it basically, during fights, apparently highlights things. Okay, the flute sucks. So, maybe we'll just do the oud or whatever, just because that's something different from Can. So, I'm lucky you'll ever have me with the cello. <laughs> All right. Well, you ready to go then? I am waiting. Yep, I locked in my character. Alright. It all happened like I knew it would. single drop of source magic. And, like flies to honey, the monsters swarmed. The rabble panicked. The carnage began. And the Magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared and sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken, but instead I became part of their story. Oh, that's my character. Oh, there we go. For some reason it just it's, it it started me out in the blackness. What did they do to me? Oh, that nice lack of shirt. Let's get our bearings. <laughs> yeah, baby. Examine. <laughs> All right. So I, I I'm keeping like the tutorials on just because I guess we get maybe something interesting. Once. It was quite enough. Right, so we got a journal. So if we go L. We get uh, my story so far. Get a bunch of stuff. I already know how the camera works. So we get a couple things. That's just the journal, though. Not really telling me what the quests are necessarily. Well, I, okay, it does tell me, but there's like a lot of reading. That sorry, I should say that. So we'll uh, we'll go talk to this person over here. Ah, oh, you're up. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of no work, lesions. even if I do say no so myself. There. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. 
Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. No, well, now that you're up, I'd like to uh, to bathe and die and tell her to ring for the servants. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm afraid you're a long way from home, my lord. A long way from the little bells that make footmen come a-running. Index fingers pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. A new life awaits. And if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. You pull out the thing around your neck, futilely. Demand to know why she called you. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Red Prince, you re you recall the power building inside you. You stare at an enthralled demon. Unleash it. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. There you have it, see? The collar's function. It neuters you, of sorts. Makes you unable to cast source. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. Well then. No known associates. It looks like someone's hit the horn of echoes a little early. Oh no, someone died here. Ah, it's just like the first oh, no. game. What? Someone died? No. All right, well, good time this person. Sight, isn't it? Burns me up. This happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky. No void walk and followed the source that did this. Ask you why she's letting you just go <laughs> close to the crime scene for all she knows that you could be the killer. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. But you don't hail from the house of dreams. When you sleep, you truly sleep. Figured as much. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. <laughs> Say, you're, that. Say you're no snitch. Uh, I can nod. So do you want to help her? I don't know. Do you want to help her? Tell her your price is considerably higher than that. Not in here, it isn't. Oh. <laughs> you let me know if you hear anything. Whoever did this is dangerous. All right. Three books. I uh, know it's open your inventory and interact with it. Uh, are you picking up boats, books, or whatever? I gave you a book. Oh shit! I gave you two books. Oh. All right. We we already know how to do do this stuff. Uh. New, it's talking about the new model of the source inhibiting collars, and then this one's uh, a woman from Driftwood Nature offered me a. Okay, that might be evidence, but I don't know. I didn't. Re I didn't read through it. Let's just talk to all the characters and I'll go talk to her again. Talk to the sheep, man. You in the sheep. Oh yeah, where's the fucking sheep? Where? Where is he? Over here in the cage. The cage. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah right. Fucking, let's see what he's up to. I'm not suited for this. It's sea cow, not sea sheep. <laughs> Admire the sheep's want to ask you my take of it. Haven't got any shears, have you? People these days. You need to find shears. It's your new objective. Wait, I'm on it, sir. <laughs> they don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. All right, we can talk to a couple of characters here. Do you know Lo, sir? She's a really good singer. I'm better though. Listen. La 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 la. That's annoying. Ah, there you are. Um, husband, would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like faves that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. <laughs> Squint a lot of who's, lo uh, who, who's love. The young woman seems about to raise her hand, but quickly remembers herself and nods pointedly at the excited children. Who indeed? Why, my name is 
Um, Madame Josephine Gribbles to Peeve. The children break out into giggles. I say, it is. Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? Alright, I guess I'll just shake her hand then. You presume right. Uh, ask if you know anything about the murder that happened on board. Nope. Trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Tell her she ought to have a look around with you, watch you so you can watch each other's backs. No, I don't want her though. I'm gonna leave. Her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Grayish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. Edgy. Uh, six new recipes learned. Alright, we found some cooking. Maybe we'll talk to Finn. I talk to the dog, talk to the dog! Anyway. Talk to who? The dog? Oh, yeah, fuck. I'll tell you if you can keep it. You! Sorcerer! Blood? No! Go! Oof. Good talk. Talk to Finn. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out, flicks a finger against one of your scales, and rubs his chin. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Say, uh, say that to touch a prince of the empire is to experience seven years of good fortune. You're welcome. Uh, he's welcome. Seven years? What an infinitesimal period. Why would anyone... I see you got a, uh, a bedroll there. <laughs> I gave it to you, don't worry. Uh, that's all good. No, I know, it popped up and told me that, that uh, I should use it to arrest myself. It's all good. <laughs> well, we'll try it later. I mean, let me continue this. Oh, oh dear. I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How difficult. You have my apologies, lizard. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. Look, I'm curious, say, you're not sure if he understands what's happening. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Understanding is all rather relative. Take this book, for example. I understand all of it, and yet none of it makes sense. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? I know everything, obviously. Most unusual. And if it's not too rude to suggest, not much of an answer. No, I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your gods. This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? If he wants legends, he shouldn't be, he shouldn't be reading a history book. <sighs> of course you don't have any useful information. Why did I expect anything else? Now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. Why was he so curious about gods? No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. Alright. Apparently you gave me something that, uh... I have a bedroll. Holy shit, you gave me a ton of stuff. Or no, no, you you have it. Sorry, I forgot that I can actually see your party stuff. Secret of holding out on you. <laughs> Dude, look how I look with the fucking, uh... <laughs> is it a dragon bucket? Yeah, 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 look at the bucket, though. What are you doing? <laughs> it looks fucking adorable. <laughs> it's like a bonnet. Yeah. All right, let's go talk to Beast. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? Uh. Wave his uh, wave his request away and ask him. Uh, fine, I'll just say. Uh, I don't know. Let's 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 ask him about the murder. His eyes snap open. He looks at you and frowns. Murder. 
Ah, that's what they were going on and on about. I wouldn't know anything about it. I kill a man. He knows who done it. His daddy knows who done it. And the mayor knows who done it too. His eyes flutter shut, and he assumes his position of repose once more. Whether they catch me is another matter, but I ain't one to hide my accomplishments. All right, what are you meant to be hearing? The ship, of course. All right, let's listen. The wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash, and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? Uh... The sea sounds angry. The fellow cocks his ear, listening. That isn't anger, it's... He cocks his ear to the other side, then smiles. Anticipation. She senses something. I'd hold on to my breeches if I were you, mate. That's all you hear, though. Listen close. Let's let the ambient sounds on the ship fade away. There now, just like that. Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. You heard it. What was it supposed to be? It's the wheel. The wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Burn my beard. That means if we've been traveling for... Yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. He shouldn't be talking, he shouldn't talk like that about such a magnificent beard. What the fuck? Oh, burn my beard. Oh, I get it. <laughs> All right. Ah, so you've eyes as well as ears, eh? You'll go far, mate, even here. All right, uh, why are you excited about reaching Fort Joy? Eh, no indeed, boy. But that ain't my final destination. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. Uh... <laughs> if you have a nice escape... Um, if he's a hatchling... If he's hatching an escape plan you want in... I don't know. Should we... Uh, you should ask this guy if if about his escape plan, by the way. Hey, you there? Why me? Oh, because you you want him in your party. I don't want him in my party. I don't know if he'll if he'll, if he'll you, make me go in there. Is that right? My prince. Oh, dude! Someone recognizes me as the prince. The cook bows slightly and wipes her hands on her gruel-stained garb. Forgive me, your highness. I didn't expect. Well, anyway, were that I had more than. Cornmeal and rotting roots to serve. I'd concoct something more fitting for one of your stature. Scoff at her excuses. You deserve only the finest cuisine. It's her duty to provide it. Panic swamps her eyes, and she hurriedly returns to her work. <laughs> your Highness. Yes. I'm working feverishly to concoct a proper meal for you. <laughs> like how the prince has a fucking bucket on his head. Uh, it's fucking glorious. <laughs> All right, there's Magister Vinkter. Uh, where's the, uh, oh, there's Silva. Okay, I'm gonna go talk to her. That's that's an important one to talk to. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Can you, oh, let's join her. She shakes her head. Game for one. I'm afraid. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Uh, whose fate is she deciding? Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. Uh, she can des decide fates with dice, asking if she can read the future in Cowan Trolls as well. She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? <laughs> I don't see why not. 
She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue, efficient like a cat grooming. You are in a cellar with other sorcerers. As everyone lay sleeping, your hunger gnawed and gnawed at you until you could stand it no longer. Finding the cellar door ajar, instead of trying to escape, you snuck into the pantry like a common thief, only to find nothing but rather questionable turnips. There you stood as a magister walked in, still hungry, feeling a mighty fool. Ah, uh, start the ground and burst. You quite, uh, you had quite forgotten about that. Oh, that's exactly right. Yeah, I'll just say that. Of course it is. The truth's right there, skin deep. But don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. The woman keeps rolling her dice. She pays you no further notice. I guess you couldn't take him with you. One of us wouldn't kill our own. No. Okay. Well, is there, uh, is there anything else here? I mean, I can talk to one of the magisters and get some special dialogue. Oh. Oh yeah, there's, well, there's a couple of them actually. Yeah, okay, sure, I'll, I'll talk to them. I'll see if they have anything to say. I'm, you're commonly called by your title, the Rip Prince. Well, you aren't here on my list. Scram, eh? We're trying to catch a killer here. Trying to find out who killed Rita. It's a register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? Ah, uh, guess I'm fine. Glad to hear it. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Alright, we're not going quite in there yet. I shall hold my head. We really know what happens there. I'm busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Go take your sub story somewhere else. I, I, I guess there is no. Uh, uh, did we find any papers or anything that regarding the killer or no? Hey, come over here. Oh, uh, where are you at? The special dialogue for this guy with uh, my character. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Turn it up. He starts recognition glowing on his face as he looks right at you. You, you look just like. The magister's face turns white. He makes a move to step backwards, then stops himself as his hand closes on the weapon at his hip. It is you. Ifan Ben Mezd. I remember you. You were my captain's commander way, way back in the war. Nod and say you remember him well. Yeah, I forgot the stench of Vile Vic. The Magister's eyes darken. His face closes over into a cold mask. I always knew you'd end up down low. Lower even than us nobodies in the rank and file. The higher the climb, the louder the splat when you fall. In Fort Joy, you're about to fall further than you thought possible, and I'll be listening for the splat. Happy landings. Wow, what an asshole. <laughs> what dick. Yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna go see if I can, if I actually had anything with Magister Waters. Actually, I, I can talk to these two guys with me. Behind the Magister, a blooded mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. Uh, uh, current to the room, ask what happened. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. Tell <laughs> you interest a magister to get to the bottom of the butter dish? If you have nothing to hide, I'm sure it'll go just fine. Bloody lizard. A young magister stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. All right, let me see if there's anything here. I'll just save so, it quick. Anything interesting for me? Uh, to find interesting. I'll take that as a no. I guess I don't have anything. So, right. Yeah, okay. So we, we can't do anything with that, so. All right, let's get to the, uh... I'm trying to get to, what are you trying to do there? Oh! I almost clipped myself. I almost clipped yourself. Alright guys, we're gonna we're gonna leave it up here. So next time we'll uh, we'll continue with this uh, uh, story here and get past I'm the to bed. prologue. Yeah, actually, yeah. How the fuck did that work? Can we just skip uh, how many bedrolls do you have? Enough. Oh, I'm just I'm just rested. That's it. Yeah. You cool. sleep. Put that on my fucking my quick. Oh, what does rested even do? Finesse, strength, and intelligence. Nice. 
Can we rest during battle is the question. <laughs> Just have a nap. <laughs> no. No. Come on. All right. God damn it. I love this so much. What are you doing? <laughs> fucking up there. <laughs> I'm trying to get this one in the room, and it's got to make it. How to sing? I did. <laughs> Here, we just do this. One of them. Oh no, I can't. Oh, whoops. Ooh. Oh. I hit the I hit the magister. <laughs> Way to be, idiot. That's okay. I have persuasion. I can I can make him like me again. It's fine. All right. All right. All right. We're gonna leave it off here, guys. Take care. Goodbye. Total time for the day. See you next time.